Hello everyone, I'm Cody. And I'm Chantal. And welcome to Unit 9, Afghan's Uncertain Future. So this is a more serious topic that has been unfolding in the last uh, couple of weeks to months. And well, uh, as many of you have probably seen on CNN, BBC, watching on the news, maybe reading a lot of things, uh, there's not much cause for optimism in the situation right now in Afghanistan. Cause for optimism. Cause for optimism. With the pullout of the NATO forces and the United States, uh, many countries have you know, tried desperately to get a lot of people out in evacuation uh, back in August. Um, and that situation just kind of unfolded and spiraled out of control quickly. Um, try to be very respectful, and this is a very solemn situation. Um, but we want to take a look at, you know, kind of why this happened or why is the Taliban in, in control? And we have to take a look at the situation where the literacy rate in that country is very low. Mm. Um, and not many of these people are educated. Um, in fact, the poverty rate, I believe, is, is already over 70%. And it's, it, the UN is saying it's a very risky situation. Literacy. Literacy. And also people's loyalty Loyalty is not towards a national government uh, or even fairly regional governments. It's to mostly warlords mm -hmm. or to their kind of the the chief of the village mm -hmm. or the you know the head of that, and so their loyalty is very spread apart. Um, and the one thing that does unify them is the country is nearly a hundred percent you know Islam and the under a real single religion and. You know, they identify as Muslims and they believe under a devout following of mm. the Sunni division of Islam. And, you know, that kind of impacts the culture and how they run things in many of the villages and towns, even the major city. Mm. Um, but uh, definitely in the situation right now is not much hope for their future. Warlord. Warlord. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Now, what else did I mention? What else do you know about Afghanistan? I don't know that much, but I am aware that um, their history, you know, is amazing. Mm. And they do have wonderful historical artifacts and, and attractions and mm. sites, which, you know, have been either destroyed or I don't know we'll ever get the chance to visit because right. I love history and old places. So that is something that has intrigued me about Afghanistan. But uh, yeah, I don't know much more than that. And of course, we all know about the Taliban that's in there, unfortunately. That's what everyone knows now. Right. I feel like it's such a bad thing to know. But yeah, what about you? Uh, well, I try to watch the news a lot about this and read. Mm. And I know a few people who've gone to Afghanistan, clearly in a military capacity. Mm. and. Uh, the few that I've talked to about their time there, they always were impressed by the people's resilience mm -hmm. um, and through everything they saw and the connections they formed with a lot of these civilians mm -hmm. or these just people living in these small villages and farming and just living a very basic life. Mm -hmm. They made some friends and made some connections and the situation made them all feel very sad and made mm -hmm. them worry about those people, yeah. uh, people who helped the U.S. and other nations. So. Mm -hmm. It's a very drastic situation yeah. ongoing and the Taliban, you know, we can't really trust what they're saying yeah. if they're going to allow women to have their rights or changes to continue, etc. So They've already changed the education system. Right. And now the language focused. For the first one, one man's something is another man's something. So for my example, a lot of people nowadays are using Tongan market because one man's trash is another man's treasure. That's true. Good deals. The next step is have been ING. For example, I have been taking the bus to work and back home every day for the past six years. Wow. All right, and that's it for our preview section. We'll see you on the review.